Hi, my name is Roman Rapak, and I play in the band Mirror Shot. In some ways, we're a very traditional band. We write songs, release music, and of course, play shows. Other things about us are less traditional. We include coders and developers in our band, and we've been playing virtual concerts and hybrid shows since 2017 using a platform we built. When we first started putting on these events, it was difficult to describe them to people. This is our first show in Paris, where the audience in mixed reality headsets are switching between the reality of the show and a parallel virtual concert sequenced in real time with the live band. People started to bring their friends, we were awarded an art grant, signed a record deal and we took things a step further by building an online virtual concert that would synchronise with our real one. This talk is about what's happening in the virtual concert space and what might happen next. I'm also going to talk about what isn't a virtual concert, the misleading PR and marketing around it, the way this amazing technology that could help new emerging artists is only really available to tech companies and a privileged number of established acts, and what we're doing to try and change this. We released our debut album six months ago. We booked to play South by Southwest Cannes and a European tour to support the record. Like thousands of artists around the world, COVID cancelled everything overnight. Unlike many bands, however, we were able to use the platform we'd built to play virtual shows that were more than just a live stream. When Travis Scott performed in Fortnite, 27 million people attended. That's 54 times more than attended Woodstock. When Tomorrowland Festival decided to go virtual, it outsold its real-world counterpart, reportedly attended by over a million people around the world. The last six major online concerts were attended by a total of 82 million people. So what actually is a virtual concert? And what does attending one mean? It might sound like a simple question, but you get a surprising number of answers. For example, is this guy live streaming a song he's playing on his acoustic guitar a virtual concert? I would argue it's just a guy live streaming a song on an acoustic guitar. To explain what I mean, here's David Bowie playing Starman on Top of the Pops in 1972. David doesn't need you to think he's playing a virtual concert, he's just being David Bowie. Here's what to look for in a virtual concert. They should be live. They should be obvious, but you'd be amazed by how many of them aren't. For example, the Travis Scott and Tomorrowland performances I mentioned were filmed weeks before the event. They should be interactive. You should be able to move around the space and interact. More than this. It should be social. You should be able to communicate with other people at the show, like you do at real shows. This new movement has, of course, been catalyzed by COVID, but this space was already exploding long before anyone ate any bats. Internet speeds, VR, AR, games like Fortnite and Minecraft are only part of the story. It's about the way we feel increasingly more comfortable with the idea of the virtual. Everyone, not just millennials, post-millennials and Gen Z, COVID has made us all digital natives. Digital habits that were pretty niche five years ago are becoming mainstream. If you were at last year's BPI conference, I doubt you imagined you would ever be this comfortable with virtual ones in the space of a year. This goes way beyond games. All of us are living in an increasingly virtual world, whether we're waiting for the little icon of an Uber driver or racking up points on social media. But there's another reason virtual concerts should be significant to artists and labels. It's because for the last 20 years, the music industry has been doing this. While the video games industry has been doing this. The video game industry is twice as big as the music industry, with a reach and cultural significance that rivals rock and roll in the 60s. Except it's more impervious to piracy, it's consumed by more people for more hours, and people spend more money on it. The traditional assumption is that the gaming industry is separate from the music industry, or even a threat to it. And you often hear music industry veterans talk nostalgically at the time. You could put 10 MP3s on a CD and sell it for 12 quid before video games ruined everything. However, the explosion of virtual concerts represents a massive convergence between the two industries. Almost overnight, the 2.3 billion gamers in the world have suddenly become potential concert goers. Games, like concerts, are all about the experience, something that artists are instinctively good at creating. Not only that, but this new type of concert isn't restricted by physical space or capacity, by distancing restrictions or certain disabilities. In a pandemic, when no one can tour and artists can't reach their fans physically, this change is an incredibly significant one. If you're in the music industry in 2020, your audience has just potentially increased by 2.5 billion. It's a very different platform and it needs a different approach. And at the moment, most of it is terrible. But the world is currently playing 3 billion hours a week of online games. So it's pretty exciting that one of those hours might be spent at your show or the show of an artist on your roster. As with any new medium or technology, it doesn't work very well at first. And sadly, as is often the case in the music industry, a monopoly is already forming. Only established acts with large budgets and support can benefit from the virtual concert industry. And faceless tech companies are moving in to tell everyone in music how concerts work and what everyone should be paid. This is why we launched our startup, Overview Arc. Those early shows were vital for us to build a portal between the real world of concerts and the virtual world of games and online communities. At the centre of all this is live music. Nothing is more exciting than being in a space when your favourite artist plays your favourite song. Virtual shows aren't meant to replace real world concerts any more than music videos replace the album. But like videos, there's an art to doing them. We've been building out our virtual world around everything we've learnt, putting on events, showcasing artists we like and exploring what's possible. It's a world where artists perform and fans can attend shows synchronised with the real world a living, breathing ecosystem where you can discover new music, buy merch, or do whatever this guy's doing. It's where the journey to the concert and the people you meet are as much part of the experience as the band you came to see, 
and artists are paid fairly. We're working on the follow-up to our debut album, Out on Believe, early next year, and preparing for our hybrid tour across the UK and Europe in the middle of 2021 using the platform and tools we've built. Our startup Overview Arc was chosen to be part of Digital Catapult's Accelerator program, and we're approaching our angel round of investment. A revolution is taking place. Technology is about to create another shift in what being an artist means today, in what music can do. It's also a time where tech companies with no interest in music culture, let alone in the survival of artists, are again dictating how the industry should work and how much music is worth. The music and tech industries need to work together towards a future that works for everyone and allow artists to do what they do best, creating exciting and memorable experiences in this world and any others they choose to exist in.